Carpe Diem VPN. Seize the network. Okay, so let's get logged into Ballet, which is our legacy site, and just kind of look at that. And we'll trace it back and look at the routing table and see how we solve this problem. First, we'll just take a look at the routing table. Actually, make this bigger, a little easier to see. So from a BGP perspective, you can see pretty much all of our sites are coming from BGP. Notice that we have supernets for our branches, 10, 1, 2, 3. We have supernets for our data center, 10, 100, 10, 200. Now we're getting all the prefixes for the underlay as well, but that's just because we're, we're peering with the MPLS provider and I didn't set up MPLS layer 3 VPN for this lab. It was a little bit overkill, it wasn't really necessary. So obviously it's not really gonna use any of these prefixes. It's, it's really only concerned with how to get to data center resources or other branches. So just pay attention to these up here. So just basic BGP connectivity from ballet side, no route filtering, no special anything going on. We're just, we're just sending prefixes. We're sending and receiving prefixes from our MPLS provider. So we'll go ahead and minimize ballet here. And let's jump over to DQ. All right, make this bigger too. Log in a DQ. Now remember that DQ is our CE router, the one that's directly connected to our MPLS provider at DC1. So this is where the redistribution and route advertisement is taking place, uh, taking place. So let's take a look at the BGP config first, and then we'll look at the EIGRP config. Okay, so router BGP, oh, I'm sorry. So you can see where we're supernetting our networks. We're just, well, here we're just injecting our networks into BGP. So and before you can aggregate, addresses you have to have a network statement for the uh, for at least one of the prefixes that matches the aggregate so here i'm just matching networks that are in the routing table that come from eigrp and then i'm saying we're going to aggregate them and we're going to only send the summaries uh redistribute connected this actually only exists so that we can redistribute the directly attached links to bravo 5 and bravo 6 so that we can get underlay connectivity because Bravo 5 and Bravo 6 are going to use DQ for IPsec connectivity uh, through that color. So we can take a quick look at that. So there'll be two route maps here. One is, uh, be, we'll look at that in a second. This is one we're interested in right now. So redistribute connected um i never would suggest to redistribute connected without a route map because you just never know what's going to happen so i can plug in a, a cable to an you know to a interface that has an ip that you thought was decommissioned and all of a sudden that's getting advertised there's just there's no good reason not to use a route map whenever you're redistributing uh, static or connected routes i always recommend it uh, in this case, we're again, we're only matching the interfaces that are connected from DQ to Bravo 5 and Bravo 6. And the reason we're redistributing those is uh, so that we can set it into the underlay. So we have to uh, we have to advertise those those links to the underlay provider because those are going to be our IPsec endpoints. So those are going to be the IPs that we're going to try to build IPsec to. And if those IPs don't exist in the underlay, then other sites can't build IPsec to that. So that's what this is for. Uh, and then, of course, just our neighbor with our with our MPLS provider. So that's the BGP part of it. Again, we're just injecting networks, some some prefix that we've learned, and aggregating it, and then we're redistributing the connected so that we can get our IPsec set up. Now let's look at the EIGRP side. All right, so from an EIGRP perspective, we only have one point-to-point -point link with our WAN block, so that's just the network that we've turned on. And then you can see that we're being very specific about our redistribution from BGP. Now we have to set our seed metric into EIGRP, and we're, we're doing that here, uh, but we're using a route map. Again, I, I generally don't, even if, even if you, unless you want to send absolutely everything and you're 100% sure that will never break, I, I generally recommend using a route map. Um, in this case, we're taking BGP and we're sending it to EIGRP. You can see that we're doing only the non s 2 n sites. And come up here, you can see this specific route map. So this is the route map and we're matching a prefix list. So we can look, take a look at that prefix list real quick. Oop, 
if I could learn how to type and see we're just permitting in, in this lab we only have one legacy site right so we're just permitting the one legacy sites user traffic so that's how we're getting the legacy sites user service prefixes into eigrp from having learned it from the underlay if that if we had that other site that was 10.80 we would just you know edit the prefix list and add 10.80 to the to the allowed uh, prefixes and then that would be sent in too so that's that's how we get it from BGP and then into EIGRP and vice versa. So now let's go to the WAN block and see what that looks like from an EIGRP perspective. So Chick-fil-A is our WAN block. Now remember, Chick-fil-A is not running BGP. It's only running EIGRP. On the, and this is all on the service side now. So you can see tons of prefixes, right? These, these are, a lot of these are, um, see, these are data center two prefixes. These came across the SD-WAN and were redistributed from EIGRP into OMP and then learned via the SD-WAN and, and then injected into EIGRP on this side. Technically, we don't need these prefixes. These are all point-to-points. Well, actually, I, was, I say all, but it's, it's these, are, these are all point-to-points. Um, but I just didn't set up a lot of filtering. It wasn't, it wasn't really part of the test plan. So, um, but importantly, you can see that from the WAN block and the data center's perspective, We've learned the branch prefixes, but we've also learned our legacy prefix. So our legacy prefix is here, and uh, as are our branch prefixes as well, as well right? So our 10.99 is right here, sorry. So this is our legacy branch prefix. And then the other ones are just from branches, uh, the other branches, the SD-WAN branches. But from an EIGRP perspective, we really can't even tell the difference, honestly. The difference in this case comes from where did we get it uh, advertised from. You can see these all came from the SD-WAN because we tracked this back. We'll see that Gig002 is connected to one of the SD-WAN routers. And then this one, of course, is the legacy one connected to DQ. So that's how it's set up. And um, let's go to the SD-WAN router now because the SD-WAN router now will learn the 1099 service prefix for the underlay routing, uh, for the uh, legacy uh, branch rather, through through this EIGRP external. So let's look at Bravo, Bravo 5, I guess. Okay. Okay, let's log in here. Now this is, uh, Bravo 5 is an ASR 1001HX, so it's running uh, iOS XE, and it's so it's using the it's not using v, uh, Viptela code. It's using iOS XE, and because we're using VPN one as the service VPN, we just have to say VRF one. Let's take a look at the routing table. Oh, make this bigger because we have a big routing table. All right, so anything with a tag with an M is an OMP route. They they O was taken. So they used M for OMP. OMP, again, is our SD-WAN routing protocol. Uh, so let's see, let's find our, let's find that legacy branch. So 10 dots. Okay, here we go. 10.99.104. See, this is, this is shows up on, from the SD-WAN router at the site. This is in the EIGRP table because that's how it learned it. Okay, it learned 1099.10 from the WAN block, which is our Chick-fil-A, who learned it from DQ, who learned it from Ballet, or from the MPLS provider. So following it back, so far so good, right? This, we've, we, we're not having any weird routing loops or anything. This is just one-way redistribution. We're now learning it on the SD-WAN, and then this will be advertised to the vSmart and then reflected to the other routes. And we can verify that by going to a remote branch and looking for that prefix. So lastly, Let's go to branch one and uh, just log in and, and look in at the routing prefix or routing table. And we need to do, again, because this is the service VPN that we're in, not the transporter underlay VPN, we need to, we need to specify the VRF. All right, so these are all OMP routes, and importantly, without going through the entire routing table, here is the route we learned. Now, in OMP, 
the the next hop IP actually is the system IP of the router that uh, is the next hop for this. So 10, 10, 10, 1, 10, 10, 10, 2 is Bravo 5 and Bravo 6 in the data center. But these aren't true next hop IPs. Like this is not a routable IP address. This is actually just the system IP of the router. The route, all, all SD-WAN routers have a system IP. So in the routing table, instead of showing a true next hop, it actually shows the system IP of the router that advertised the route to the vSmart. Uh, if you if you want to check true next hop capabilities, you have to go start looking at things like the OMP table and see what uh, T locks are built uh, to these devices, so which IPsec tunnels over which transports exist to these two boxes. We're not going to get that deep today. I just wanted to cover the whole underlay overlay piece. Uh, 